Hello and welcome to LearnDigitalDesign.com. This will be a continuation of a series we're doing on learning to create an avatar image. If you haven't seen the previous tutorials, you need to uh, back up and go view those first. Uh, you can find them on our website at www.LearnDigitalDesign.com. Giving up is not going to get you uh, anywhere because you're going to want to give up at a time. and you're going to start tracing around these objects and you're going to think it looks like she's got tattoos all over her face or something. It, it doesn't look right. There's no way this is going to turn out right. And you're going to want to give up, but don't. Just hang in there. You can you can do this. You do not need to be an artist or any have any kind of natural talent. No matter of fact, if you can walk and clap your hands at the same time, you're way ahead of the game here because this is uh, basically just tracing uh, with a little bit of knowledge because you're going you're gonna to need some practice, yes. It's not just, uh, it's not so you know, easy that the first time you've tried it's going to work out for you, but I'm sure the first time you tried to walk and clap your hands as a small child, uh, that didn't work out for you either. You probably uh, fell, so... Let's try to get uh, this going here. We're going to trace around these objects here on the cheeks. And we're, you're going to have to trace around the highlights and the shadows. So those are a couple of highlights there. I think this is probably enough to go ahead and transfer over to the canvas from the model. We're grabbing, uh, you know, we're going along with our anchor piece here. I'll call the outline of the face the anchor because you're going to anchor it every time you, every time you cross over to the, from the model to the canvas. So we're, we've lined those two lines up perfectly now. And what you can do is you can get it kind of close and then use your arrow keys to get it in perfect. And once you uh, once you kind of get it real close with your arrow keys, hold down the Alt key and then you can get it real close. I'm actually coloring this outside anchor. It's going to be green on the model. And the reason I do that is because you can if, if the anchor from the model and the anchor for the canvas are two different colors, see what, see what I'm talking about here? You can line them up more easily because you can see where the blue shows through. And you can get it very exact like that. I'm holding down Alt and using my arrow keys now to move that around. And we got it just about where I want it. And we're going to delete this green anchor. And now we have these objects that we trace from the model perfectly in place. We're grabbing our dropper tool and getting some colors, grabbing some color samples from the model. And this is one of those times when I was telling you about earlier that you're going to have to have guts because right now it looks terrible. As a designer, you kind of, you know, you get used to people looking over your shoulder sometimes, but uh, you never get used to them looking over your shoulder and seeing something like that that looks so hideous, and they just cannot see it. They can't see the end, the end product like you already can. They do not have, uh, they're not necessarily going to have faith in you like you do in yourself, because you're going to build confidence as time progresses. They're not going to have faith in you, and they're going to they're going to sit here and think that you're nuts until they see the finished product and then all of a sudden you're a genius and you're an artist when in fact uh, in order to do this you don't have to be an artist it, but uh, I am one in the boat that would say that uh, you can learn to be an artist as well. Okay, deleted the strokes here, deleted the blue lines. 
So all we did basically is got color samples for all of these different objects. And now I'm bringing these eyebrows up to the top because I don't want them to be underneath the shine of the forehead. I want the eyebrows on top. What I'm doing now is I'm grabbing this entire face back here. And I'm going to uh, make it a brighter color. I'm grabbing one of the brighter colors on the face and I'm going to use a gradient. It's actually going to be a radial gradient to make it dissipate as it gets towards the edge of the face. And it doesn't look like it did a lot now, but trust me, you need to do this. You don't want just solid colors, especially on something of that big of an area. You want gradients. Gradients are good, solid colors are bad most of the time. Now we're going to use a gradient to grab this forehead uh, shine here. I'm going to use a linear gradient this time and get it just about how I like it. So now basically the way we're going to make these shines look right is we're going to use a combination of gradients and blurs. Here all I did was I used a uh, difference to knock a chunk out of that bottom shine because I didn't want them overlapping because if you're using gradients and they overlap any of the spots that are see-through or transparent are gonna they're gonna overlap and you're gonna be able to see them underneath so you're gonna have to uh, use some path functions to make everything line up and using the blur usually when you apply the blur every it starts to look right um, couldn't do it without the gradients and couldn't do it without the blur. So, uh, let's apply a blur to this one too. You gotta be careful. The only time you gotta be careful on blurs is when you're working around the edge of something that needs a hard edge. Because if you need a hard edge on something and you apply a blur to it, you, there's no way to apply the blur just to one side. Now, you can use some tricks to make everything work out and if we have to do that in this design, then I'll show you how to do that, but I don't think we'll need to. Um, okay, here we're just doing some more gradients and some more blurs on the cheeks. We're just bringing those gradients out in a way that looks pleasing here. And you just play with them until, until it kind of looks decent. Until you get something that you're kind of happy with. And the beauty of vector graphics are that you can always come back and adjust this later so you don't have to get married to anything it's a very forgivable medium you can come back later and adjust whatever you want as a matter of fact I'd say it's a lot more forgiving than paints it's a lot more forgiving than any other artistic medium really that I can think of because you can always go back in and delete any part you can make any kind of adjustments you want. You can change the entire thing uh, however you like. So here on the nose, and you know, we just applied that gradient downward and applied the uh, applied a blur to it. On this shine here on the tip of the nose, we're gonna do a radial gradient. In order to make that look right, we're probably going to need to make the actual shine a little bit bigger and the gradient smaller. Otherwise, it cuts off the edges sharply. Should about do it.